Hey, Teddy K here for the Best Buy blog, and in this video, we're looking at the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, Samsung's latest flagship, which is available at Best Buy now, and one that brings a whole lot of AI to the dance. If you compare the Galaxy S24 Ultra to its predecessor, the S23 Ultra, you'll notice that it's not dramatically different. Although a couple of things that I appreciate early on, when I tested the device, was that it's just flat. So the screen is flat, the back is flat, the curved edge screen, at least for now anyway, seems to be gone. Something that Samsung championed years ago, but has now hopefully abandoned. I just, that's just my personal preference. I prefer a, a flat screen over a curved edged one. But the titanium edges too, I think are also an interesting uh, design choice. Uh, obviously Samsung is not the first to do it, but uh, it adds a certain durability to the device along with the Gorilla Glass armor for the 6.8 inch display, which is basically the same screen that Samsung has used for the last two iterations. So no real surprises there, although it is a lot brighter than it was before. 2600 nits peak brightness, very, very bright. This is probably the easiest time I've had looking at a phone in bright sunlight. Uh, normally glare is an issue there. It is much less of an issue with this phone. So that's always a good sign. So there's a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor in here and also 12 gigs of RAM. That's now the starting point. So eight gigs of RAM is gone. You start at 12 gigs and you start also 256 gigs of storage. You can go to 512 or one terabyte as well. So these features along with the cooling system or new cooling system, I should say, make this a pretty robust device. Of course, you get the S Pen as well, which comes included with the device this is the only samsung phone of the s24 trio that supports the s pen uh, and for the most part the features are pretty much the same with the pen as well so nothing specific that's new with the pen but it does play a role in a couple other things that are new here if the s23 ultra was more about the camera the s24 ultra is more about the software particularly the ai features or galaxy AI features as samsung calls them these are Again, for a company that is known to do a gimmicky thing or two with its devices, you might sort of throw those away and think that they're probably just gimmicks, but they're not actually. These are features that could serve a useful purpose, uh, not even on a daily basis. Some are related to the camera, but some are not. I'm gonna run through some of them here uh, based on my own experiences as well. I'll start with interpreter and the overall translation features that Samsung has touted here. Uh, for the most part, it, they work very well, and I didn't get to test Interpreter as much as I would have liked, simply because the limited language is available. So, uh, uh, you know, the other languages I speak are not in the list, and so I did try it out with a, a Spanish speaker. It's pretty simple in how it works, so I, I, I basically use it so that I'm pointing it this way, the person's talking, I'm talking, and we are both seeing the text of what's on screen. So fairly straightforward. And the translations are straightforward as well. But, but I have to stress the linguistics involved here are, are, are largely, though conversational, they are very standard vernacular. So slang, local term terminologies, like the, the kind of language that maybe locals will use, dialects, things like that don't always apply in this case. So there may be instances where the translation is lost in translation. And so what you mean to say or what the person is meaning to say to you may not come across uh, in a comprehensible uh, form. Uh, that I think is always a challenge with any translation software. So uh, Samsung's not alone. Google has also had some of these struggles as well. But I like where the starting point is here because at least it is adaptable. So you can use it while you're out and about and it lives locally on the device. You don't need an internet connection. So if you're traveling and you wanna use it for any particular reason, you, you wanna ask directions, just sort of, I don't know, just interact with someone uh, local for whatever reason, you can do it without worrying about whether or not you have a connection. Another one that I think is interesting, this is not exclusive to Samsung, but Circle to Search is a cool one where you can do an image search by actually using a photo, whether you took it on this phone or somewhere else, you just kind of circle around what it is you wanna look for and Google will then take over and do a search based on that query. It's pretty, robust actually this could be anything from a pair of shoes to a watch that somebody's wearing uh anything anything apparel basically so clothing shoes uh jewelry uh a hat 
you know, any anything really that you can think of that a person will wear is something that would be searchable. But it also goes for anything like, you know, food or, you know, there's a certain dish or something that you saw in a photo, uh, even a place, a landmark, whatever it is, you can pretty much search anything that you can circle. The searches are pretty accurate for the most, you know, again, there's always going to be some variations, but this is different from a, a, a typical Google image search where you're using a photo to see a similar type of image. That's not what's going on here. In this case, this is basically your, you are searching specifically for what it is you have circled in there. And uh, again, not exclusive to Samsung. It's already on Google Pixel devices and other Android devices are getting it as well. So it is a Google feature rather than a Samsung one, but it is a good one. I'm going to talk about the camera and the AI photography features sort of mixed together here because they 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 inter intersect in ways that I think are interesting. Okay, the gist is that you can take a photo, whether you took it on this phone or somewhere else, it doesn't matter, and you can apply generative AI edits. So they could be suggestions that the AI is suggesting for you, or you can manually do them yourself. So in edit suggestions, for example, if you open a photo in the gallery and you swipe up, there will be an option to remaster or to remove shadows, uh, remove reflections, things like that. The, the AI is scanning the photo to look for things that it could change. The remaster is always an option, no matter what. So even if there's nothing to, no reflections, no shadows, nothing to remove that way, you always have the option to remaster. This I found to be a very mixed bag. Depending on the photo, in some cases, it, it's either a minuscule difference or a negligible difference, uh, or in some cases, it actually, it, it adds too much onto the highlights. It brightens the image more than is necessary. So again, it's an AI, it needs to be, obviously it needs more training, it needs to learn how to better edit photos, but in some cases it does make a positive difference. So it's one of those features that I think is worth experimenting with. You can take a manual approach if you also choose to uh, swipe up and then choose a generative edit option. So if you do that, this is where you can circle a person or an object and literally move it to another part of the image. The AI will then not only put, put the object of the person into that other spot, but then fill in the empty spot that you've just created. And what happens usually, for the most part, is a pretty good image, actually. The AI does a pretty good job filling in those spaces, but there's a caveat here. The caveat is that if you have a busier background, so there are a lot more I don't know, just either there's people, there's a crowd back there, or there's a number of different items, or it is a, a very detailed background, you might find the AI struggles in filling in those gaps properly. So you may get something that looks a little bit weird, uh, or some, or it, it misinterprets what it's supposed to fill that area with. It is an interesting feature nonetheless, because at least this way you can, you can work on an image in a way that if you, did, if you felt you didn't shoot it properly or maybe the subject isn't centered, maybe you want them more off to the side, you want to change the composition in some way, this is one way you, where you can do that. I will note that Samsung will put a watermark in the left bottom left corner that will indicate that this was an AI edited images, an AI edited image, pardon me, and also the metadata. So if you also look at that photo in the gallery after and you swipe up to look at the details, you'll see that it, there will be a disclaimer there that the image was edited with AI as well. The camera shoots very much like the previous S23 Ultra, but there are some very particular differences I want to note. Now, uh, the obvious one is that the 10 times zoom telephoto lens from the previous phone is gone here, replaced by a 50 megapixel five times zoom lens. So you can't see as far optically, but you do get a higher resolution image at least at half that optical distance. So it's not terrible, but certainly a lens that I kind of missed because I felt like it, it would have come in handy in certain situations where I was shooting with this phone. Either way, the low light gathering is better. So if you are gonna shoot in low light or night, you probably will find that actually in some cases it gathers too much light. So you have to dial down the exposure a little bit when you're shooting. Uh, but for the most part, again, uh, images will come out looking great. Uh, the 200 megapixel 
uh, shots. Again, you want to crop, you can do that after. Expert Raw, for those who really want that level of control. Uh, cool thing here is that you can shoot at 50 megapixels, but and 12, so either or, but there's also a 24 megapixel option as well, which I thought was really interesting and really cool to have that. So you have three different ways to shoot an Expert Raw. The photo quality here, by and large, whether it's JPEG, RAW, whatever, is 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 excellent for the most, again, in most cases. Uh, in some cases, I find that Samsung, Samsung software seems to think that you want to expose an image more than you probably should. And what happens is, is that when, when the processing comes in after you've taken the shot, it, I, I find that it actually, it just overdoes it with the brightness. I, I don't need that much brightness. And so I, uh, I had to struggle with that a little bit and find ways to, to tamp that down. Now you can, you can actually remove some of the, I don't want to call it AI, but certainly some of the processing that Samsung applies to a photo afterwards, but either way it's, it's for them, you know, again, generally you're going to get good shots, uh, but you do have to work a little bit to figure out how to compose the shots not just based on the environment you're shooting in, but also based on what Samsung software might do after you've shot it. The video is kind of a similar case. L low light video is gonna be better than it was before, but my favorite feature by far is applying slow motion to an existing video. So this doesn't have to be a video that you shot on this phone. This could be any video that you already have saved or that you, you even received from someone else. And if there's a portion of the video that you want to have in slow-mo, you can do that. I love this feature for a number of reasons. I mean, anything from like anything sports related or like, I don't know, maybe you have like a, a, a toddler that's doing something kind of cute and you want to slow-mo, you know, you want to slow-mo that for some reason, like for just so that it's funny, whatever. Uh, they're a pet, especially, I think, um, if you have a dog and you want to capture the dog sort of, you know, running or or doing something uh, funny as well. That's definitely, uh, I think, it's one of those features that that really adds something extra to to your videos. So uh, I loved it. I think you'll like it as well. But just know that it applies to video that you shoot with the regular video mode. Uh, I could not get it to work on videos that I had saved that I shot with Pro Video or any of the other special video modes that are on this phone, like single take um, or or dual view, for example. Okay, I've covered a lot here, and naturally you have to ask, okay, how long is this phone gonna last uh, on one charge if it's doing all these things? The Snapdragon processor definitely helps the cause here because this phone will actually last longer generally than the S23 Ultra. Not by a lot, but it, it definitely will last longer. The efficiency of the chip helps in a lot of ways to keep this thing going, but also to keep it cooler. Again, with the, the improved cooling system, this phone didn't get quite as hot uh, as the previous model did. Not that I had a major issue with that, but just I just noticed that this thing kept cool uh, a little bit more. And I was able to get through a day despite all the stuff that I was trying out and all the photos and videos that I was taking while testing this out, but just even gaming or anything else, I, I could make it through a day, but you probably will have to charge uh, at the end of the night for sure, just so that you can be ready for the next day. There may be that odd time also that you might have to charge it even during the day, uh, depending on how excessive you've used it. It'll be interesting to see what Samsung does on the software side in improving the AI features, the camera, things like that. You do get seven years of upgrades though. So seven years of Android and security updates, that's pretty significant. Uh, something that I think is very noteworthy. So it means that the phone could keep going and, and going with new features for the f a long time, at least as far as current standards go for uh, for updates on any phone. And that's my review of the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra available at Best Buy. Now you can actually click at the link below to learn more about it. For the Best Buy blog, I'm Teddy K. Thanks for watching.